And welcome. It is Wednesday, November 14th, and we are in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, gearing up for another amazing auction this weekend, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, November 16th, 17th, and 18th. Um, so the auction will begin this Friday, the 16th at 2 p.m. Eastern, and it will continue on Saturday at 10 a.m. as well as Sunday at 10 a.m. And we have thousands of soldiers up on the auction block, and I, we're really excited. I think we have about 1,652 lots. <laughs> Looking forward to selling them all. That we are. So with that being said, we're going to begin this we're evening. right to it. Yes, we're going to start with lot 1229, and in this auction, it's really unique because we have Edmund's Traditional Toy Soldiers for sale, and we really have every set he has ever produced, and he was located in San Francisco, California. Yeah, it's really a terrific collection. It was George West, and uh, he was a personal friend of Edmund uh, and basically bought every set ever produced by the manufacturer. And even went a little bit beyond that, along with the special sets that they produced, he would actually have Edmund create an additional figure to sort of give the sets a complement of eight or six. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the sets we have have additional flag bearers. We picked this one right here. This is the 155th Pennsylvania Regiment. And I liked it because we're from Pittsburgh. Of course. Uh, this uh, regiment, Edmund would actually sort of create actual regiments for almost every regiment that fought, especially in the American uh, Revolutionary War, the Civil War, they did the Imperialism Wars, World War One, World War Two, Korea, and Vietnam. So he really had a very, very large line of production. And, um, and we essentially have everything that he ever produced. And I think you mentioned he's no longer producing. Uh, so uh, it's one of those things that I think, uh, uh, you know, it's really a unique opportunity to buy something very special. Uh, there won't be any more of these made. Very limited product production. So most sets, there are under maybe a 100 of them known. You know, some he might have produced two, but a lot of the sets are, you know, maybe only five or six that he produced of them. So really nice opportunity to fill in your collection. And he really is a gentleman that is admired in the toy soldier world, and he's done some amazing work. He's a wonderful artist. I mean, I really think the sets speak for themselves. You can see here the detail, and I personally really love all of the detail on the flags and all of his sets. I love the size of the flags because they're just, they're bigger than I feel like what would be to scale in reality. And, you know, it's like a big wind gust coming through, of course, but I really think that's what makes the set. Well, they have a great look, and, you know, it's one of the things that Edmund was known for. He would research the, the uniforms meticulously, and then he would execute them in great detail in their figures. So, you know, it's very accurate. You know, these are Zouaves, uh, which was actually originally, the Zouaves were a French regiment that started in the 1830s. And they were known for their fierce fighting, uh, light infantry regiment. And they, they, them, the Zouaves actually carried over to the Americas. So during the Civil War, a lot of the regiments, this one, 155th Pennsylvania, was a Zouav regiment. They loved the uniforms. You know, man in uniform really attracted the ladies, so they liked those very big baggy pants. It, yes. was, a, it was a good look for them. And in addition... All of his sets in the sale, or most of them, you know, they're in the price range of, I mean, this one, for example, is estimated at $100 or $120. So it's in that price range that, you know. They're very affordable. Yes, you know, affordable. I have a feeling a lot of these sets will sell for $60 to $80. Some might go to $300. Uh, but I think we have maybe $180, $200 of them. There's, yes. There's a huge Ooh. number. So I think it's a nice opportunity. That's yeah, all on day one. For sure. That's day one. So these are up Friday. <laughs> Another Edmund set here. This is lot 1349. It is six pieces, and as you can see, there are two extra figures there, so you can see them blown up on the bottom left hand of your screen. But all of these sets come with their original boxes as well, and this is the U.S. Marine Corps Legation Guard. Yep, great set. You know, again, this is a set that Mr. West had Edmund actually create an extra figure, the second standard bearer, um, making a six-piece set. Uh, you know, so some really unique items here. And here's another one that I particularly really 
uh, stood out to me that I just want to pull up for you. Don't tread on me. Yes. Don't tread on you. <laughs> Don't tread on me. I loved this little flag. And uh, once again, I just, I love it. I, I love the way that he designed and created all of these sets. They're extremely unique. And as Ray said earlier, can't harp on it enough. He's no longer producing um, them. So definite commodity. Yep. Exactly. With that being said, we are moving on to 1398. Yeah, right here we have a Blenheim uh, set. Uh, Blenheim was made by a gentleman named Derek Knight. Uh, he actually uh, started production in 1978, I believe, and produced probably up until about the uh, late 80s. A very high quality figure out of Wales, England. Uh, here we have, I think it's a Royal Marine uh, or a Royal West Surrey. The following lot, we have a couple additional uh, figures that can be added to the set. But again, super high quality, very affordable type of figure. And, uh, you know, it's not very appealing. It is. And this is, it's actually two sets. It's B45 and B46. So for those of you Blenheim collectors that are looking to fill in some spots in your collection, that is the set that you'd be looking for. But I just think that another great quality set all original, original boxes, and they're great soldiers. Yeah, really are. Moving along, we've got lot 1091. It's a trophy, another Welsh manufacturer, so trophy of Wales. Yes, so we have some trophy, and these were actually souvenirs from the West Coaster Toy Soldier Show, for those of you that have attended that or have heard of it. Uh, it was a great show on the West Coast. You'd go out there, and every year, uh, the organizers, there was a lot of different organizers of that show, but they would actually have one of these figures made by Trophy for each year. Uh, we have two lots here. The first one starts in 1990, and I think goes up to 99, and the second one goes from 99 to 2012, right, Bree? Correct, yeah. So and this is All the right. second lot here. So these are lots 1091 and 1092, and I just think that, this is really charming set. I love here um, the different uniforms and hats, but really what's charming personally to me, and I think what makes it is the soldiers in their uniform up top, but they're all in um, their swim trunks on the bottom. So they're surfers. And they're, they're surfers. surfers. <laughs> and it's, it's just a really, it's really neat. Whether you attended the West Coaster or you didn't, um, definite souvenir collector items. And is do we think this set's fully complete, Ray? Do you think well, there's... No, well, it goes from 99 to 2012. They made them last year. Okay, a little so... side note, unfortunately, this, this show's in a bit of limbo this year. Uh, we don't know if it's actually going to continue. Um, there's been a couple of organizational changes, and we're hoping that uh, we'll have something on the West Coast to go to this spring. Yes. We'll keep you posted. We will keep you posted. Next, we have lot 2040. This is the Britain's first version corporation ambulance, and it's a beautiful ambulance. Well, very rare. Uh, so now we're moving into day two, and this is called the Corporation Ambul Ambulance, or we call the Corporate Ambulance. Uh, there are three types of ambulance, the, the Army Ambulance, uh, the Volunteer Ambulance, volunteers, they would actually volunteer. Back in World War One. sort of the medical unit was important, but they were more interested in the fighting lines. So a lot of these type of special services lacked, and they relied a lot on volunteers. And the Corporate Ambulance was basically an ambulance funded by corporations. A lot of times they were breweries or hardware stores that would sort of put together funds and they'd sponsor an ambulance. They'd actually have to, there really wasn't a place to sort of buy ambulances at the time. Yeah. So they would sort of buy an automobile and convert it to an ambulance and actually ship it over to Europe. And this is an example of a corporate ambulance. One of, it's actually the rarest of all the ambulances by far. And the only thing that might be a little rarer is the uh, Royal Mail van. But nice example. It doesn't have the original box. It's just a brown cardboard box. But a very, very nice example of this rare vehicle. It very much is. And next we have lot 2055, which I will pop up for you on the screen in one moment here. So 2055 is set number 318. It's the Royal Horse Artillery at the Halt. Uh, again, this is one of the rare of the uh, horse-drawn units. Uh, right here, uh, um, most of the units, so you have the Royal Horse or Royal Field Artilleries, uh, this being the horse, uh, rare in the Holt position. Um, 
the figures are actually sort of standing there. Mm -hmm. As opposed to like the, now the next lot that we have coming up is uh, 2050. And this one, I don't know if Ray said it was circa 1929 to 1932. Yeah, peak caps. And it's provenance the Ed Ruby collection. Oh, okay. This is the one that was pictured in the Great Book of Britain. So most of you that have that book, this is the one that was in there. Yeah, that's great provenance. Yes, yes. And next here we have lot 2050. This is Britain set 1339. It's a beautiful set. Yeah. Now this is very rare. So this is the Royal Horse Artillery. Same set, they're at the gallop. See how the horses are galloping here? Uh, and it has the outriders with them. And most importantly, they're in steel helmets. So <laughs> this is actually the conversion from the soft cap to a shrapnel proof helmet. Um, they were only made this set in 1939, 1940, and maybe very early 41. So very, very rare example. Uh, probably gonna be the top lot in the sale. It's close. There's a couple that'll be close to it, and you know, my guess is it should end up selling around four to five thousand, sort of in that range. It's also another. It's one of those sets that just speaks for itself. I yeah. feel like it jumps off the page um, in the photograph, and the paint is it's it's an excellent condition. Yeah, very very nice set. You know, it's a uh, you know one of the very rarest of all the horse teams. Yes, yes. And also, um, if you did not see in the catalog, there was a newspaper inside the box that was dated from 1942. Mm, so it was something that someone wrapped that. it in years ago and, you know, just a little Right little after it was bought, they put it away. That's, so. that's why it stays in such nice condition. That's what makes them rare. Again, you can't stress it enough. These were toys. So this was actually something that was meant to be given to your child on Christmas or his birthday and... You know, they say go outside and play with it, and they would drag them through the mud. So it's very rare to have any of these sets survive with their boxes in that kind of condition. I agree. So one of a kind, unique rare set, lot to twenty fifty. And next, we are moving on to our cover lot. Cover lot. Um, and if you had your catalog, I should have said this earlier. Um, I hope you're following along with us as we move through the days. And we are on. This will be on day two. So this will be Saturday. And it's lot 2062. It was made by STE, and it's uh, President Kennedy's funeral. Yes. You know, a, a very, very sad day, uh, 1963, year before I was born, November. Uh, so, uh, you know, this was a representation of the funeral. So, uh, Kennedy was shot on uh, the 23rd, I believe, and the funeral of uh, State funeral was held for the following three days, but this is the procession with little uh, John Jr., uh, Carolyn, and uh, their mothers as the uh, cortege went by. So great set. Uh, they made a very limited number, you know, very relevant, uh, very, you know, poignant to this day. It's just, you know, it's one of those... Um historic moments in history um that was it you know it's worth featuring on the cover even though it's you know not obviously the happiest of moments but it, it's definitely was legendary and there are two of these sets at the kennedy memorial and one at the kennedy memorial and one at the ronald reagan library yeah and he was very charismatic charismatic um, you know, it, he really was influential in a whole generation's life. So much, in fact, that I know my mother, uh, who's from a small sp still town up the Monongahela River, which is the river right behind us in the painting, um, they still remember the day that John F. Kennedy came to town. They talk about it like it was yesterday. So it was very exciting, you know, and he was very influential in American politics and world politics. He really was. And um, so it's just, you know, it's a great set, and it's 26 pieces in total. Um, there is one piece that is not pictured here um, for the cover, but you will see it inside the catalog, and it was circa 1988. Yeah. All right. So next, that we have some other old things. So this is a we have a Hauser communication vehicle coming up here. Yes. Uh, this is a fairly rare vehicle. Um, in beautiful condition, still has the factory tags on it. Here, Bree's pulling it up right pulling now. Up. Look yes. at that. So I mean, talk here. about mint condition. Just great. You know, these were made in Germany right before the war. 
Um, you know, there's many stories of sort of how GIs were over there and, uh, you know, they brought a lot of these souvenirs home with them after the war, uh, leftover store stock. And you do find a fair number in very good condition, but it is a very, very nice vehicle and rare. Uh, we have a handful of tin plate vehicles in this sale. It really is. And, and this one, we have estimated between 1,500 and 2,200. So... It's a very nice set. You can even see as we zoom in a little bit closer here, you can see the condition. I love how he's looking at his map there in the passenger seat. Got to know where you're going. Directing you them along the way. Don't get lost in the war. Actually, you can see here, too, uh, these vehicles, they would have separate cast lead guns. And uh, they actually had little gun racks sort of in the back seat. You can see it sort of sticking right up there. Uh, but this has all the guns. There's a shovel on the side. Uh, had electric lights, so battery-operated lights. Uh, you know, very, very advanced toy for its time. Yes, very, very nice. That's lot 2071. Next, nice. we are moving on to 2079. Cool. And I really love the scale of this set. I, th I think it's great. It was made by Potsdammer. And this is a Joe Shimmick set, circa 1980. Yeah, Joe, he loved the Heidi, so he sort of did Heidi recreation. A lot of sets that Heidi should have done, could have done. Uh, Heidi did do a uh, a Trojan War set, uh, and this, in many ways, is superior. Um, the horse is a little different than the Heidi horse, but the figures are very interesting. He spent a lot of time sort of creating the unique figures as part of the uh, the Trojan Wall uh, on either side of the horse there. And this set also comes with he did a lot of great sets oh um, hundreds i and we have a fair number in this sale and i really love them because as i said he did sets that um i'm a fan of heidi big fan of heidi that they just didn't make um and with this one this is the box lid here so that you can see it i'm just gonna yeah, that's nice. bring it up but yeah so it has it has a nice lid as well and it, it's a great set Yep. Great large display set. So uh, next we are changing gears a little. We're going to move on to some Lucotte. Yeah, um, the, the Lucotte, now we have a huge Lucotte collection in the sale. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've rarely had this much Lucotte. Um, it really ranges from the 1930s through the 1960s. So all different types, uh, all different styles. This is from one of the higher part points of the sale, uh, 1930 set here. So really a, a great example. If you look at the color, just a beautiful set. It is a beautiful set. So um, that one is lot 2100, uh, the French 17th line from the 1930s. Next, I will uh, also put on here, it's lot 2190 and... It's coming. One moment. The coronation coach. I have the coronation coach. Yeah, look at that. It's so beautiful. I'm really excited to show this set tonight because it's a set we usually can't show on live, um, just because it's it's difficult to ship. So it's one that we really don't want to ship that frequently. Um, and you can see um, the even the horses, how detailed they are. And what do we call that on top of them, right? Is that their plumes or what do we, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of like a soldier plume, but I'm not sure what the official name is for that. I don't know. I couldn't tell you what the official name is for. Um, it's kind very of, fancy horses. Yes. Fancy horses is the, is the way to put it. I just think that they're really interesting. It's in fantastic condition, of course. And um, it, it's a very, very nice Lucotte set. We also have another one here. It's lot 2147. Hope you're, everyone's following along with us in your catalogs as we walk through all of this. I don't believe I showed this one, but just another one. So we have a we have a very nice collection of them. So there's a lot to pick from in the catalog, and they're all lined up in that section. Correct. So next we have lot. 2273. This is the Battle of Wasserman. Yes. This is a great Hafner set. Three trains, like 200 and some figures. So Franco Prussian War, Demi Rounds. This is a really, really exciting set. Uh, again, there's a couple duplex figures in here. You can see like wounded 
carrying yes. wounded. Up in uh, the top left corner. Yeah, very, very nice uh, set when it comes to you know, early Demi rounds, circa 1900 on this. Yes, and it's a massive set. It has 213 <laughs> pieces in total. So it's a great, great, great Demi round set. Next, we have lot 2285, which is an elastilin plastic set. And I will add that for you in a moment. Yeah, this is an early plastic. The, uh, these have the pearlescent bases, so it's first version. Uh, here, we're pulling it up right now. So again, not the rarest of figures in this group, but just the early first versions of them. Uh, you can tell by the color of the bases. Uh, that's what we look at. Uh, they have painted flesh. Uh, but some very nice, unique figures. We have a couple lots uh, that um, you know I think should be of a lot of interest to collectors. Yeah, so you can see here the, all the medieval personalities. You've got the maidens, you've got the knights, and it's an affordable set. It's estimated between $150 to $200, so um, I just think it's a great plastic yep. for all you plastic collectors out there. there are a lot of new Britons in this sale. Yeah, so we have some king and country, also um, some new Britons, yeah. and love, love, love both of these sets. We've got a lot... Um, 2574 and 2575. Up in the upper left corner, we have a Britain's Circus Tent, and it's set 866572. It includes the big top, as you can see in the back there. It was circa 1998. And, I mean, pristine condition. Yeah, beautiful. And, you know, it's nice we can show them this way. We can show them fully displayed. Uh, so that's how the big, you know, impressive displays. Yes, very big. And especially the lower uh, right corner, that's the circus comes to town, you know, walking down Main Street, which, you know, uh, before my time, but that's what circuses used to do. Yeah, so we have the street parade there, and you can even see the cobbled street below, so there's a lot of detailing. I love the Britain Circus sign in the front, and this one is set 867350, so for those of you that are collecting new Britain sets, just so that you can add that to your repertoire. So, um Love those. Next, we have, we're moving on to Sunday. So Sunday of the auction begins at 10 a.m. Eastern, once again. And these lots are going to be lots 3015, um, 3042, 3038, 39, and 3006. These were all made by Bill O'Brien. Yeah, Bill O'Brien, he would love to convert figures. He would use parts and castings from original figures and recombine them to make these really exquisite, unique type of figures. Uh, he did a whole lot of military, which we have a lot of military, but you don't see a lot of his civilian too often. So there's a young gentleman proposing to his lady, and I like this one, the falcon ear. Yes. That's what I fancy myself as. Okay. <laughs> or a zookeeper with eagle. Zookeeper, as we call him. zookeeper with eagle. I, they had, I like uh, Falcon Ear. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Hunters, they really did some unique, interesting figures. Yeah, so we have the golfer with the the uh, open golf trophy there, and we have the hunter with his dog, so that's great, and the trumpeter as well. Yep. So there, we have more civilian items pictured here than military, but he did some beautiful military yeah, We have a big grouping too. of them, and you know, they, they, Bill was displaying at the West, or at the Hackensack uh, two weeks ago, or a week and a half ago, and uh, he had a big table of these, and he, you know, he loves his figures, he, and then the collectors really seem to love him too, so he was really promoting his figures he he's still producing but in extremely limited production so you know it's very difficult to get his figures anymore except for when they come up at auction yes so one of a kind Bill O'Brien figures we've got a nice collection of them here up on Sunday next we have some beautiful beautiful boxed early Britons. Yeah, so we have a nice collection here. Uh, nothing extremely rare, but a lot of the stuff sort of from the teens, you know, right before World War One, and then just the you know, early 20s. Uh, we have the Gordon Highlanders, South Australian Lancers, really interesting South Australian Lancers in the brown uniforms with the spiked helmets. Uh, the Cameron own, uh, uh, Cameron um, the Highlanders. Are, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cameron Highlanders with box packs in like the light khaki. So just some really interesting, beautiful condition sets to fill in your Britain's collection. They are. 
I agree. So, and for those of you um, that are selling insects for Britons, the Gordon Highlanders are 77. The uh, Queen Zone are set 114, and the South Australian are is set 49. Correct. Next, we have a Heidi set, so we're oh, going to change yeah, gears so a about, little. Maybe about 30 or 40 Heidi sets. It's a nice little Heidi ambulance set. Uh, very nice condition. Not the rarest set, but just I like the condition on it. Sort of indicative. We have a number of horse-drawn units in this uh, auction. And see, you're looking at it there. And, uh, you know, nice with the original Excelsior in it. Nice box. Very clean figures. Again, this is a nice early set. You know, circa 1915, 1912, sort of in that area. Uh, and, uh, you know, these type of sets are very, very affordable. It's a great Christmas gift. Uh, you know, this set will probably sell for around $400. So, you know, if you want to give something special, you know, there's a lot of things in our sale that, you know, can be very affordable. Some of our lots will sell for $20 or $30. So. I agree. And I, I like the addition of the Excelsior in this one. I think that, you know, it just adds that extra vintage layer that makes it extra special so it does. that one is 3288 and now we have arabian nights yes the arabian night set this is lot 3323 it was made by minyo it is 35 pieces in total and once again beautiful display set it's in pristine condition or sexy as we call it sometimes well, that's right um and it just has great detailing, everything about it. You know, the Arabian sets, I love the glitter that's involved um, on top of the figures. I think that it gives it that extra layer. I think the backdrop is great with the palm trees and the blue tiled flooring. The, it just makes the entire set. Well, Mignot made terrific dioramas. And, you know, this is a nice, big, large display. You know, you don't have to really collect a lot of toy soldiers, but, you know, if you want to own a couple sets, this is a great example. Uh, really gives you a nice feel of what toy soldiers are all about. Couldn't agree more. And, and finally, yes, we are ending the day on Sunday with some gorgeous Fortuny. And we have four of them here featured. We've got lots 3382, 3413, 3424, and 3444. Um, we have Jacques Coeur. Antoine de Bourbon. We have um, testing her French here. Hold on, <laughs> Comtesse de Provence, and also Marie Antoinette. As oh. as those of you may know, she was the Queen of France um, for quite a period of time. So these are Virginie. They're in great condition. All single figures. Um, yeah, this actually came from a collector from Pittsburgh. His name was Jim Merck. Uh, we were lucky enough to be selling his estate. He passed away. But he had one of the top, you know, three, maybe even top two collections of Rattuni in the world. Uh, probably about 400 figures in total. Uh, this is, we have about 80 in this, this sale. The rest will be sold most likely all next year, although some might even go into 2020. Beautiful condition, extremely rare figures all across the board. So, uh, you know, participate in this sale look forward to our sales all next year if you're a virtuni guy or yes, girl that is for sure and that's all we have to show today so i hope you were able to follow along with us with your catalog you really had a great time that was very good hope you enjoyed it our uh, auction the soldiers fall in line once again begins this friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. So it'll be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's a three-day event. So we are still accepting bids. You can jump on our website, oldtoysoldierauctions.com, and check that out. You can also call us, 412-343-8733, or fax bids. It's too late for snail mail, but uh, just call us, and uh, we'll make sure to execute your bids for you. The next Old Toy Soldier magazine is coming out next week. So it's printed. It's going to be in the mail shortly. So look out for that. It's another great issue. And our next Old Toy Soldier auction after this weekend, we are following up with December 9th. We have the Charles S. McCowan Jr. collection. Very excited about that one as well. Not going to reveal too much because we have this one coming up this weekend. But look out for that. That'll be December 9th. And then December 8th, is going to be our next cyber toy auction. So we have over 750 lots for that sale. Great sale, 
tons of mechanical and steel banks. We have tin toys. We have wind-up toys. We have some newer items. We have Star Wars. We have a wonderful robot collection, which is very exciting. And uh, we have some modern cars in there. So check that catalog out. It's up on Live Auctioneers right now. Just search Cyber Toy Auctions. Also, look out for our winter catalog that we produce once a year. Everything's for retail sale. It's the Ray Toys Toys of Yesteryear catalog. It'll be coming out in January. And if you would like one, please call, email us, or fax or snail mail. We'll send you one. So just let us know. And that's coming out. And... We have a lot of announcements. I'm sorry. It's long-winded. <laughs> um, we have a new Adventures with Ray and Bree that we filmed in New Orleans uh, that will be the next RSL auction coming up in March 2019. So if you don't follow us on YouTube, you should. You should subscribe to Ray and Bree Live, R-A-Y and B-R-E Live on YouTube. That one will be next week. It'll definitely be before Thanksgiving. It's a great episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. We really appreciate it, and happy bidding this weekend. Have a good time. Free, we gotta get going. Free, it's time. Oh, sorry, I was speaking to my dog. Oh.